The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Hey, what's up, guys? Body, what's going on, man? Morning, body. That's a cool story about the eggs and also kind of a sad story about the eggs. I, I had no idea that um, that there was that... Uh, I'm sorry, what did you call it? The hood? The, the uh, thing on the outside? Bloom. The bloom. Yeah. It's, you know, mother nature at its best. You don't have to, you don't have to store your eggs in, in a refrigerator and they, they lose quality when you, when you do that, they degrade. Yeah. Most Americans don't know that you can just store your eggs in like a pantry or something. And that's how like most other countries do it. They don't right. like pre-wash their eggs. And so when we wash it, it's like, oh, it gets air quote sanitized, but it actually makes it worse because you remove, like Doug said, that protective coating of the egg that prevents, um, like bacteria from getting inside the egg and stuff. Um, so exactly. What's I cool mean, is I, that I learned that um, I learned it by accident, maybe like ten years ago. Um, some guy at work, he um, he also had a ranch, like a small, some, I don't know, a little bit of land, and um, he had chickens because he said, "Yeah, I just got the chickens to eat all the bugs off the cow poop." And um, so he would sell me eggs. I think it was like I paid him a pretty good penny for it, but. Um, these eggs, like the shells were so thick, like you had to actually hit them pretty hard to get the shells to break. And uh, yeah, I had read you could store them outside of the refrigerator and I would leave them there for weeks at a time and they, they would be totally fine. Um, so yeah, and what was crazy is the yolks in those eggs were like almost a dark orange. You would, some, in some cases, you would almost call it uh, close to red. Mm -hmm. And uh, the taste was very different. Like I would eat them pretty much raw. Like I would just separate the yolks. Um, and they, the taste was just so much better than anything you would get from a store. So yeah, I learned, I learned back then, kind of by accident, that you could, you could store them outside, and that like chickens that are healthy, the, the, the eggs just look totally different. The yolks look totally different. Yeah, yeah, chickens that are out there, just you know, eating bugs and eating grass that are walking around, as opposed to being caged up. I mean, there's so, there's so much. Um, you know, marketing and misinformation with eggs too, right? Like you'll have like, the, there's all the different types. Pasture raised is obviously the best, but you'll have like free range or cage free, but even cage free. It's like, all right, they're not in a cage, but there's like a 10,000 chickens right next to each other in a barn, but they're cage free. <laughs> I've um, seen the, um, yeah. the, the requirements for like stuff like that. It's so goofy. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. You know, they have like, 10 feet of outdoor space the rest is in a barn and now suddenly right. they can be like yeah grass fed or whatever <laughs> that's why i love these guys these guys are legit you know i, I researched them so yeah any, i said it again anybody that's out there that's got their own chickens going please reach out to me we'll get it go we figured out the packaging uh we'll add it to gratuitous and eventually xmr bazaar where people can just you know order eggs via subscription with monero get the real deal with the bloom on it Till the, feds, cool. till the feds shut us down. <laughs> it's going to be hard to shut us down, though, right? That's basically you're, you're, what happened for them. Imagine yeah. some weaselly, slimy little fed boy on, on XMR Bazaar looking for, like, yeah. hey, we found this guy who was selling eggs with, yeah. with the bloom. Or ordering right? them and, like, testing them to see. The bloom is, in fact, still on them. These haven't been washed. <laughs> so do you oh, know the God. specific issue? Was it because of the bloom or just because they weren't frozen? Uh, it was It was both. I both. believe it was both. Yeah. So Not frozen. Yeah. They wanted them kept at a certain temperature. Basically, they want them washed and kept at a certain temperature. Yeah. 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 So I've seen the videos where um where the Fed boys will go and shut down some farm. They'll um, you know, like a raw milk dairy farm, like some local thing. Uh, and I've seen they'll just they'll just show up and they'll you know, they'll they'll just try and shut the whole thing down. I think right. I saw it's one video where the sheriff destroy. came out and was like, nah, y'all aren't gonna do destroy that. all the milk, right? Like you you see, right? I've seen those videos where they show like just gallons of milk being poured out i haven't i haven't seen any of those videos but um yeah. i mean i've read about that yeah it's crazy what the hell <sighs> well what? what do we got for price well um so like i think it was on monday that the etfs the judge ruled hey uh you've got a they ruled in favor of grayscale they told the sec that um you uh, your rulings have been arbitrary and capricious and we're going to vacate your decision, and you have to go re-review it. Um, that doesn't mean that the that the SEC is going to play ball. In fact, they didn't. There was uh, a number of ETFs that were um, their deadline was supposed to be 
<clears throat> excuse me, their deadline is supposed to be this week, and then the S SEC rejected them. So I think we can continue to expect the SEC to play in bad faith like they've been playing in bad faith um, and come up with some other bullshit reason to reject the ETFs um, until like until they're basically forced to or until maybe the administration changes or something. Um, so what was interesting about that is, um, you know, we had kind of like this big pop. Here's Bitcoin. Um, actually, you know what? Let's take a look at Bitcoin plus Ethereum. So we had this big pop and um, actually, I'm sorry, schizophrenic. Uh, I didn't have that chart drawn out quite as well as this one. Yes, so we had this big pop and kind of like we talked about last week, you know, we said, hey, maybe, maybe if we're lucky, we can get to this sort of uh, yellow circle area. But there's plenty of resistance along the way before we actually get there. Um, and it's really, really not good price action to pop up into this area to pretend like we're going to break back into this. Um, what was support now became resistance. Um, to break up into that and then basically not confirm it and then fall right back down. Um, you know, in a shorter time frame, that's let's go to the one hour. It's basically a Bart chart, right? Another Bart chart. Boom, 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 Bart Simpson. So, um, yeah, I just I wouldn't call this good price action. Uh, I'm going to stick by my thesis and say that, um, you know, the bears are, are sort of winning the day here for, for the meantime. I do think that the probability is further downside. This support line right here. Um, you know, this support line is looking a little bit more and more like it's, uh, it's meant to be broken. Now, maybe it's not, um, I guess it is possible that, uh, that perhaps it could hold somehow, you know, get down here and then, and then come recover. Um, right now I, I just, I don't see it. Um, what I'd see on the macro looks like, uh, looks problematic starting with the dollar index. So, um, <clears throat> basically this week. Uh, so the dollar broke out of pretty much any way that we could draw this uh, this downsloping resistance, any way that we could have drawn it, um, it's broken out, right? It, it and this sort of these these top lines sort of being the most recent lines right here, um, and this this bottom line here being um, a little bit more long term, you know, coming back all the way to, to this point. Anyway, so what we saw was a little bit of hesitation. Dollar pumped, came back and retested those lines, and then it pumped right back to to the upside. So. I mean, this looks like a chart ready, ready to move up. This looks like a chart that's that's ready to be uh, to continue being bullish. So, um, yeah, the the dollar index doesn't look so great. As a counterpoint to the potential that maybe there's still some risk on money that could be had, uh, we've got the reverse repos continued to come down this week. And honestly, I kind of expected them to um, to find a bottom and then eventually break up through this yellow line, um, but that's not what happened. And you can kind of see how that uh, how that played out with uh, with stocks. So basically, we had we had a little bit of a rebound this week for stocks. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq. Um, yeah, so price came up, sort of tested this support area, these upsloping support lines, which you can see are, you know, kind of just the most reasonable way to draw the uh, what was this channel here. Um, at the moment, uh, you know, the money count coming out of the reverse repos, I think, is what has driven this the pump in stocks this week. Even though crypto, basically overall, crypto did nothing; it pumped and then it came back down. Um, so it would maybe be slightly premature to uh, to call it, but you might be able to call this a head and shoulders in progress. This would obviously have to come back down. Um, really, if price does come back down, like if the NASDAQ does make its way back down here next week to, to touch this support line again, um, that that's what you would call not great price action again uh, to, to tap that line, come up and then come right back down to it in such a short amount of time. Again, I, I do think that it's likely, it's plausible, probable that um, that stocks need to take a bit longer of a cool off as well. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not calling for big crashes. I know that a lot of people do. Um, you know, you, there, there's a never ending stream of certain people that that like to call for stock market crashes all the time, um, and they're right. You know, like once a decade, but but they're not exactly right very often. So. I, I'm not. I'm not even necessarily. I don't even. Big think short that. guy, right? With that guy who's famous for the big short. Didn't he come out and make a? Oh, Michael Burry. Yeah, yeah. I think he. Yeah, he. Um. So Michael was... Burry was. Um. He was like the first guy in 2000. I guess he was probably like 2006 or 2005. And um, read. He he's a medical doctor that got into investments, and then he read like all of these uh adjustable rate mortgages and the contracts and and the mortgage backed securities, and he read like everything about them. Um, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. He read everything about the mortgage contracts and read the, like a sampling of so many different contracts and said, these are going to, these are all going to blow up. Like these are terrible. And so he actually went to the banks apparently and uh, got them to create short products for him to short the housing industry. 
Um, he was the first one to do it. So he made a lot of money from that. He's famous for that. I, he, he, he was did, also famous. He Go came ahead. out recently and, and placed another short like three weeks ago. Yeah, that was so. We got the news like three weeks ago, but those were shorts he placed back in June. If oh, okay, if I if memory serves me correctly, so it's possible he could have closed them by now. It's also possible, um, you know, that he takes a position right before a filing deadline that gets reported, you know, and then he closes it. He was also famous for trying to short Tesla before it put on like another two X in twenty twenty one. So, mm. um, okay, you yeah. know, it's. There's a chance because he's famous now, and this is like something that you always have to think about. You know, it's not an accusatory thing, but you have to wonder a lot of times with guys that have a big following, they often have the ability to move the market or to provide liquidity to the opposite side of the real trade. So, like, <clears throat> one thing we saw in 2021 was a big push across the board, across stocks and crypto and everything, was to get the hype going so that everyone, all of the plebs, would provide exit liquidity to the insiders that were probably selling back then especially crypto insiders, for sure crypto insiders were selling um, their stack in 2021. That was a very long, large distribution. They used the plebs as ex liquidity there. So you do have to kind of wonder, Burry being famous now, can that be used in a counter cyclical kind of way? I have no idea. You know, I'd like to think that a guy like that is scrupulous, but I mean, you know, he's a doctor. So these <laughs> days he, he could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, just, uh, just know that, um, there are a lot of people that are more and more calling for like some big stock market crash. And, um, you know, a lot of it is based on this, uh, on the yield curve inversion that we've been, I guess you would say this has been over a year now. Uh, that was mm, July of last year. So, so it's been slightly over a year that the yield curve has, has been inverted. So, uh, that is kind of getting long in the tooth, historically speaking, um, where the yield curve has been inverted for some period of time, usually, um, somewhere like, nine months to 18 months before a big reversal happens. And then you see like some major catastrophic crash. So um, yeah, we'll just have to keep watching this again. If this thing spikes up very quickly while the yields spike down, that's, that's a sign to get out of the market and to do it post haste. Um, let's take a quick look at the wave magic on. Um, so, so make sure you're following body on Twitter. So you're notified as soon as that happens. If I see it, yeah, I'll I'll post about it as soon as I see it. I, don't, I probably don't post about prices enough on on Twitter, really. Um, I was actually thinking about that just yesterday. I need to post. And hey we're all relying on you for that financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, we've had all these bar charts. We go to this this position where like price just does nothing, right? Like that's what price did this week. It was just flat, flat, flat. It popped up. Um, I think you asked me, um, on session, I. Uh, I think you asked me like, Hey, what do you think about this pop? And I was like, eh, I wouldn't trust it. Um, sure enough, you know, came right back down. I probably should have posted that on Twitter just to give people a heads up. All right. I'll think about that more. Um, yeah. Cause a lot of stuff happens midweek, you know, and, uh, we, we can't talk about it all, you know, today on Saturday without, uh, you know, without getting some frame of reference. Uh, so, okay. Here's the wave magic on the S and P 500. Um, you know, you could, you could make the case that, that this chart is trying to set up to be bullish for more gains uh, on the way. But normally, like if this was going to be a bullish setup, I really like would expect that we need to come at a minimum, test the uh, the bottom edge of this, this blue boundary um, and or potentially test uh, the moving average zone some, somewhere around this area. Um, and that that like could be that might be enough of a pullback if a head and shoulders pattern does form. Um, what you would do here is you would draw a line. Uh, connecting the armpits, you would draw another line uh, from the. Okay, sorry about that. You draw another line from the top um, down there, and then you would basically, from that line, you would sort of move that. Sorry, these charts are slow. The, the mouse moves slowly with all these lines printed. Um, but anyways, if this head and shoulders pattern does play out, your target would be somewhere down here. So. Not like too crazy far down. I really, you know, and sometimes things can overperform. You could see this thing actually go lower than that. Um, these right here would be very good supports overall. Um, so my thinking, again, my ideal case, my ideal scenario here um, for making trading gains <clears throat> is to watch basically stocks come back down to this um, 
you know, to this big support area sometime between now and maybe December, uh, and then get an opportunity to load up, right? You start buying down here because that's, I mean, that's just what the chart would say. That's just what you're supposed to do down there. Uh, and then the same thing, something similar with Bitcoin and uh, the crypto market and potentially Monero as well. Um, although I really never want to see Monero down. So it's because, you know, I just hodl. So I'd rather just see it go up forever and I don't ever want it to pull back. So probably that influences <laughs> my thinking somewhat. But um, yeah, I mean, it. I would, I would like to see um, crypto pull back again to this sort of uh, these very long-term lower standard deviation bands, this cluster of bands. That oh. would be nice. At this moment, I would kind of expect it to take probably a little bit more of a drop than that. Um, and this would also sort of coincide with touching the uh, the uh, the the lower regression boundary. So that, that would all be really nice. I would love to see that. Like, that's my ideal scenario. I think there's a reasonably good likelihood that that happens. So I'm basically out of the markets right now, except for my Monero hodl and some shit coins, because uh, my thinking here, and I've got a few shit coins and my thinking is, okay, if I'm wrong and the market goes up anyways, I don't want to miss out. And since shit coins have a good tendency to overperform, if the, if the bull market starts early, I should, you know, those shit coins should hopefully perform somewhat well, even though they're a very small, you know, part of my stack, um, you know, maybe like five. 10%. Um, hopefully they would make up for the case that I'm wrong. So that's sort of like strategically hedging against um, the chance that I might be wrong here on, on what I think the markets are going to do. Uh, let's see. I just, I just want to chime in real quick. Uh, I see there's a bunch of people in the space, which is cool on Twitter spaces. But if you guys want to see the show, you can watch it on YouTube or actually even on Twitter. I, I post the link in the nest. Uh, it's stream live there as well. If you want to see the visuals. Ahead, yes. Yeah. These, the, the charts don't make a whole, or the, the, the speech doesn't make a, as much sense without the charts. So highly yes. recommend that. Um, let's see here. I was looking at USDC. Here we go. USDC has kind of leveled off. So we had like this big dramatic crash ever since the March event and, and it sort of depegged for a moment and then it repegged. But, um, USDC has just been the, the, the market cap of USDC has been going down, 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 which would indicate that there is somebody or some set of people that are redeeming their USDC um, for real dollars. Um, so that would be the theory there. It seems to be leveling off overall. Um, you know, that doesn't mean like it has to completely stop, but it has been like six months, basically, um, almost six months. And uh, it's just been kind of going down. So it's finally leveled off. Um, there, there are theories about this. It's hard to say if any of them are, are real, but um you know, the theory being that USDC is redeemable, whereas Tether might not be quite as redeemable. Um, and whether that's because Tether is insolvent or just because they have significant problems with their banking relations um, and have had a lot of problems getting banking relations. In fact, um, you know, you, you see the news come out regularly or you see someone else do an examination of the documents that were uh, that I think it was Coindesk or no, no, no. Coindesk reported on it. Maybe it was DCG. I can't remember the. I think it was DCG associated somehow. Anyways, they uh, they wanted to see all the documents that the New York New York Attorney General got from Tether when they sued them, and the court ordered that Tether turn over like all of their documents, which was like millions of documents. Um, but anyways, you'll see like people um, kind of looking into that more, and you're like, oh yeah, they 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 faked some papers, and they they did some shell corporations, and did some shady stuff so that they get get banking access. Um, you know, and. Uh, I mean, you, you almost could kind of understand it because it's like it, the banks are trying to shut people out of crypto. Um, so, you know, what that's is it right that they should do that to Tether? I don't know. Tether's also shady. They've got these like connections and um, that are very shady. So maybe the banks are just trying to protect themselves. Um, I mean, obviously, the banks are always trying to protect themselves. Anyways, just a, a point, the, the USDC fall off, the dramatic fall off is sort of um, leveled off here. Uh, and then... Let's see. Obviously, we haven't talked about Monero. There was one more thing. Um, Fed meeting is going to be this month here in a few weeks. They should probably raise rates another 25 basis points. At least that's the that's what they said they're going to do. Um, let's see. I guess that's about it until we get to Monero. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, overall, long term, let's go to the daily. Monero versus U.S. dollar. Uh, you know, we're just kind of sitting on this sort of, you can kind of see this support line here that's that's developing. And currently, price is, is sitting at that support line. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see if that holds. It, it's hard to think that the rest of the crypto market is going to go down um, without Monero following down. Um, maybe we can be lucky and sort of uh, perform better, right? Maybe this uh, this head and shoulders that's still, you know, and 
it is a head and shoulders at the moment, but uh, we, you know, we really need this thing to come back up here. We need to break the support uh, resistance line. We need a big pump on the Monero dominance here to really say that, you know, that this thing is confirmed as a head and shoulders. Uh, and obviously getting to this area right here is, is basically confirms that. So, um, you know, this is a very big chart pattern. Hopefully it plays out. Uh, there's a good chance I think that it could. Um, we've also got the uh, Monero versus Bitcoin ratio. Uh, yeah, this thing's just kind of sitting here. We've got all these wicks, all these downside wicks. Although you might say that there's a bunch of upside wicks too, but uh, the tails look longer to the downside for sure. So th this chart looks like it, it wants to go up. It's probably getting ready to go up. Um, I think that the news with that with the court case where the um, where the the judge ruled that the SEC their decision was vacated and they had to take another look at it. Um, that, uh, you know, that kind of drove Bitcoin up and Monero down here on this candle here. Um, and that one as well, I think. Uh, I can't remember if that decision was on. Well, anyways, that doesn't matter. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully this will move to the upside. This looks like it's starting to get towards the end of its pattern. Maybe it takes another month. It could still just chop sideways potentially. So uh, we'll have to wait and see there. Uh, overall, I mean, the markets just, you know, kind of been flat for the crypto markets just, just tended to be flat. Um, Monero transactions also still pretty flat, hovering below 20K for the most part. Uh, would, would be nice to see this start going up at some point. Uh, maybe, maybe get some of that Argentina adoption. <laughs> uh, and then we've got, it uh, looks like we've got about 26,000 nodes that have been seen, our peers that have been seen in the last 24 hours. Um, this is, this has grown significantly. I think last year this was like 12,000, which is interesting because, um, you know, we're seeing more nodes out there, but, uh, we're not seeing more transactions out there. So I wonder, I, I do wonder is, is there the potential? And, and this would really be something for one of the devs like Howard Chu or someone to answer, like, is it possible that we could be seeing some kind of civil attack where, um, there are nodes being launched by the government or by chain analysis to try and, um, uh, defeat something like Dandelion Plus Plus, right? Would uh -huh. they maybe be trying to to sort of narrow down? Are they maybe they only have enough capabilities to focus on you know particular transactions or particular ransomware payments, you know stuff like that? I, I don't know. That that's just like me thinking, you know, speculatively out loud. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, I think, man, there was one more thing I wanted to tell you guys, but I guess I didn't write it down. Uh, I don't remember it at this moment. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for price. Um, Things tend to be flat. We're, we're getting bar charts. You know, we, things are low volume as well. Like, if you take a look at the volume on on Bitcoin, for example, um, Bitcoin volume is is very low. Let's let's go to um, let's go to Coinbase uh, because I don't trust the volumes at a place like Binance. Um, Kraken is good, but Coinbase is more popular. So, um, but yeah, if, like if we just take a look at the volume. You're going to see that we've, we've dropped off significantly. We can go to the weekly so that we can understand that better. Uh, so this is weekly volume. Yeah, I mean, you can see how dramatically that, that's dropped off. Uh, and we can even come in here and put the uh, uh, put the moving average, uh, put a moving average length. Oh, let's see here. Volume. Let's make that white. Yeah, so you can see that basically the, the moving average of volume has dropped off significantly. Maybe we should do a shorter time period here, maybe like um, six weeks just to get more resolution. Um, and we haven't seen volumes this low since basically 2020. 2020 was the last time that we saw volume this low. Um, and especially like consistently, like volume has been consistently down. So, um, you know, I mean, that's not that's not great, obviously. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to uh, keep an eye on this. Uh, like I said, I, I think it's probably a good idea to, um, uh, you know, to, to be cautious in these markets to not be getting extremely long. So, uh, yeah, good luck to traders out there. Good luck to hodlers out there. <laughs> All right. Good stuff, as always, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, TLDR, Monero is going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> use Monero, guys. Use it. Ignore the price. Just use it. Yep. <laughs>